Okay, it now being six o'clock, I will call the Monday, September 18th meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded for Cablecast and YouTube presentation by Area 58 Community Access Media. The video of this meeting is not to be considered an official public record. Our chair, Christine Joy, is absent tonight. She's actually in Tampa. <laughs> Our first agenda item is a meeting with uh, Jonathan Jonathan Beloso, Senior Sales Account Manager for Arcus. John, you want to come over? Uh, if you sit right there where that microphone is, then we can hear you. So I invited Jonathan in because, uh, as you know, we've been looking at a projector system. Right now, when we have people come in, if they wanted to use a PowerPoint, it's very cumbersome. Yep. And uh, Steve Pello from the Silver Lake Regional School District uh, sort of showed us what was going on at the Dennett. And apparently that's been cookie cutted through all the schools that are in the system. So our worry is we have a nice room. We don't want to tear it up. Mm -hmm. We're assuming that the um, screen would, I'm sorry, <laughs> the screen would have to go on that wall? Yes. Okay. And maybe you can tell us, you know, you've seen other other areas. Um, how should we be laying this out so that it's easy for whoever comes in? Yep. We're going to have to have a computer and yeah. table and equipment. So uh, we also have a podium over here that probably should be moved over here. Okay, yeah, I, I, would, I would say that you'd want to put that podium in the location where the projection screen is. So if I was the one presenting to you right now, I would be standing to either the left, the left or the right of the screen and kind of going over the PowerPoint presentation that's directly behind me on my right or left. So you would want to put a wall jack, which would have HDMI, VGA, and 3.5, which are your typical digital and analog connections for either a laptop or a computer. Um, that wall plate would then, you would plug your laptop via HDMI or VGA into that wall plate and then the projector would play that content onto the screen. The screen in this case would be, it's actually like a dry erase board, either right. six by four or an eight by four, or I mean, you have enough room here too where if you did want you know, a larger board, you could probably do a 12 by four board on this wall. Steve suggested an eight by four. Eight by four, eight by four, six by four is the more typical size. Yep. With an eight by four, um, we can get about a 90 inch to 100 inch diag in the 16 by 10 format on that board. So your screen size is around 90 to 100 inches in diag. Which, which is I think is a pretty good size for a room of this nature. You know, it's not an auditorium or a huge lecture hall or anything, so I think that's very much sufficient. Um, the cabling itself, um, it seems like this wall, it seems like there's in-wall cabling within these walls. So we should be able to fish the cabling directly down into the projector so that you don't see any raceway or any surface mount EMT or any of that type of stuff. It's all in wall. Okay. The projector itself would mount directly above the board. All right, right. so it's usually about 10 to 12 inches above the board. Um, presentation wise for sound, um, we usually do, basically we could do two Epson wall speakers to the left or the right. If you want to get into some higher end stuff, you can do ceiling speakers with a ceiling amp. But no. you know, typically, no. what we're doing with the projection systems, which makes it simple, is a left and right wall speaker, and then basically anything that's playing through the projector is going to play through those two speakers. Now, how will that work with the cable system? So, the cable feeds. I guess basically we would have to take the audio from the presenter's laptop and tie that into the video switcher over there which I took a peek at it earlier, and I do think that's somewhat possible. Um, the video feed, there's an HDMI um, input available on that switcher, so that we sh could possibly take the laptop feed that's showing on the projector and also have that as a broadcasted feed that he can tie into from that switcher. So okay. if you wanted to not show the video of the room, 
and you want to just so show page one of the PowerPoint presentation and with the audio from either the presentation or these mics, you should be able to do that. So we'd be able to switch back and forth? Yes, but the switching would somewhat be live because he would need to choose which, right, he'd which have is to do what. It. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't know any of that before this, so that proposal wasn't based specifically on doing that, but it's certainly, I certainly have the ability to do it like that, yes. Okay. Um, Steve suggested that we also, the wall board be included in your... Yeah, the dry erase. Right. Yep. Because then it'll fall under warranty? Yeah, so, this? I mean, the, the Epson um, system, because you're a town, um, is a three-year warranty. So basically, anything that goes wrong with the projector within the three years, um, as far as certain defects, obviously if you go up there and someone hangs on it and it breaks, that, that's a different story. Sure, but sure. you know, defect-wise, the, the warranty is gonna be covered for three years. Um, we typically see within the school systems that the lamp life lasts for around 3,000 to 5,000 hours. For a space like this, you're not gonna be using this eight hours a day like a school teacher is gonna be using it. So. You're not going to have to worry about replacing the bulb for a good three, four, five years even. Um, and the bulb replacements are a lot lower cost than they used to be. They're around 79 to to $100 now for a bulb replacement. Okay. Now, the, the quote that we provided is an interactive projector. And what an interactive projector allows you to do is use two interactive pens as the mouse on the computer. So essentially you can, it's like a smart board, if anyone's seen a smart board mm -hmm. before where you can use two pens to basically control the mouse on your computer from the board, not having to be up at your computer. That allows you to annotate on top of things, uh, use certain slideshows. That's what we had. I think that's what we had. I don't know if you need that or not. But I'm not we could did. you do it either way? Because yeah, ultimately we're gonna look to Steve Pillow, I think, to yeah. say, hey, this makes sense for you. Yeah, the ones the schools are all doing are the interactive versions, but that's because the teachers sure. do a lot of interactive with the students. Right. Um, but it does save you some money if you go with the non-interactive version. Yeah. It Really, the projector looks exactly the same. It's just the difference of interactive versus non-interactive. Okay. All right. What would we need for uh, housing? Just a table, or what What would you suggest um, seeing other well, places? I mean, you're going to have... The 8x4 dry erase board, you're going to have the projector mounted above it. You can yeah. have the speakers to the left and right. It's really up to you guys whether you tell us to put the AV jacks on that side or this side. Okay. I very much recommend putting them on the same wall that the presentation system is on. Okay. Um, so that's going to be up to you. Um, as far as housing goes, I mean, there's just going to be a wall plate that you plug into, and you're going to have a remote that you're going to just turn the projector on with. Now, do you come in and do the wiring, or do we? <laughs> so I, we do the full turnkey installation. Okay. Uh, we do all the low voltage cabling. Yeah. We have electrical services as well. Um, I didn't provide that in the quote, but we can come in, tie off of an existing electrical line, and bring that line to the projector, because the projector and speakers do need power. Yeah. I don't know if the town provides that themselves, if they have facilities that does their own electrical. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Huh? So, uh, does he do it? He's an electrician. Yeah, I know he's an electrician. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it typically costs, you know, for us, it's not a lot of electrical work, but it's a couple hundred dollars in electrical materials. And Why don't you put it as a line item on the okay. quote? That way we can, you no know, problem. again, we'll run it by Steve. I don't even, he, he might even have somebody too yeah. who he would recommend. Okay. And I think the goal is turnkey is possible, but yeah. We, yeah. We, we're a town, we have to stay in budget. So yeah. a few options in there would be helpful. Understood. Now, um, it, there is a pretty big difference in pricing, whether or not we need to tie that laptop feed into your broadcast system as well, because it does require extra cabling and extra components to do that. I can certainly give you kind of option one, option two, so you can see the difference in pricing. It would help. But, uh, but I will fair warn you that there is obviously a difference in, you know, the labor and some of the components that I need in order to do that. So. And again, I guess I'm going to look to Steve Pillow yeah. to help us because I'm certainly not technical enough to do that. Question? So um, I guess there was some concern about the, the, the bead along there. Uh, the screen's going to go up higher than that, right? Um, 
Yeah, so, I mean, that's going to be really up to you guys to decide. I mean, obviously, within a school system, we typically mount it at, you know, I don't know the exact inches, but it's around 48 inches or so off the ground. Um, in this case, we really have two options. We can mount the dry erase surface, which is technically the projection screen in this case, um, directly above that kind of the, where the wall comes all out there, um, which will, I, I guess, it will be a little high for doing dry erase notes. But it, for presentation purposes, it may be better because it's at a higher height for people to see. Um, well, so that's going to be up to you guys if you do that. The other option we have is, you know, we can do some kind of backing on the backside of the dry erase board to make it somewhat flush with that onslaught yeah. and then mount to that backing, yeah. you know, a couple pieces of plywood or something like that. We were thinking of having strips come down that would mount so the... Yeah would be mounted and it would be even with the bead yep. okay we could but, do it we could do it either way it's yeah. just really as, okay. as far as your preference goes um oh. you know i didn't see the room before kind of thrown together the estimate but you know now that i saw it i'm able to kind of provide you something that's a little bit more accurate okay and your estimate will include all the adapters and doodads for... Yeah, I mean, we would give you your presentation cable kit, which would be like an HDMI, a VGA cord that you would use to plug a presenter's laptop into. Um, and I that would include, give you, if someone came in with an iPad... Yeah, I'll even, what I will do is I'll give you like a MacBook <coughs> adapter. It would be like a typical HDMI adapter for a MacBook. Yeah. Um, do you need an iPad adapter too? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. I can include those items, yeah. Okay. Would you cabin copy Steve on these? Yeah. Yep. So he sees problem, what we're yeah. seeing? Yeah. I'll CC him on um, anything that I send over to you. Do I? I sh yeah, I do have your email. So I'll send that over to you and Steve, and I'll break out both options and Great. try to write out the scope like I did last time just so you understand the differences. Great. And so once we make our final decision on the <coughs> options, what kind of time frame are we looking at? Right now we're looking at anywhere from around a three to four week lead time okay. as far as when we receive the purchase order to installation. Because once we get that in, John's going to be so happy. It's going to be so much yeah. fun to be around <laughs> him. <laughs> yeah, so it's, um, you know, right now we, we do a lot with the public schools, so we are still very much in busy season, which is a good sure. thing. Um, but it takes us about... 10 business days to 15 business days usually to get all the hardware dry erase boards all that into our warehouse and then as soon as that happens our server staff gets in touch with you guys and kind of goes from there but it's around anywhere from a two to four week lead time and um it's one day to install everything yeah an installation like this would just be one day and yeah. you know we could come during the day we can come after hours it's really up to you guys as far as yeah. time frame wise beautiful good okay. I appreciate you coming in. Yeah, looking very forward much to it. Appreciate you guys letting us yeah. uh, come down and present this to you. Um, the other thing I will add, just ending here, is we are a state contract vendor, so we do a lot of business with the state. So OFF 40 is the state contract that something like this would go under. So. Okay, right. we've received a grant that this is being done okay. under. So, all right, no problem. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Great. thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks so much. Yeah, I do. Is this something that should be insured? We can provide insurance certificates as needed. You know, not for you putting it in, um, that liability, but something to add as a so, Yeah, I would think you'd want to add it to you, to the blanket that? insurance we have. It's around, I think, the whole around 3000 Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, the Board of Health is here. You Good evening. Good evening. We're here to talk about uh, your form, right? I guess so. Yeah. Um, so we're on animal control office. Yes. All right. So um, we have created this new incident form. I think you've seen it. We've added stuff to it. Um, I, I think it covers most of the angles, has a lot of information on it. Um, the real goal here was to kind of standardize the reporting, um, avoid kind of some of the confusion we've had on what constitutes a report and doesn't constitute a report. So that was one goal. The other goal is to make sure that the agencies are reported to to which they're supposed to be reported. Um, hence the third page where there's a note on the date that 
that the report was submitted to Board of Health, to the Police Department, to the Board of Selectmen. Um, so um, um, I, I think we wanted a chance for the Board of Health to take a look at it and make sure they were comfortable with everything. I, I had an um, sort of um, by chance meeting with the animal control officer last week. Um, he was CC'd with this form as well and I started the discussion to just make clear that we wanted to avoid the confusion that was going on and made clear that by using this form for every incident um, we could solve a fair amount of the problems that we've been having. Um. I think it takes a lot of the, you know, guessing out. Yeah, my only comment would be the submission time. Um, and in the, all right, so that's piece number one. I, um, the second piece is um, uh, um, the uh, town council um, sent us sort of a um, uh, uh, a job description. Um, I've um, taken that and kind of individualized it to um, to point them. Um, one of the essentials um, functions of the job includes a bullet point which says um, uh, the job of the animal control officer includes documenting all animal incidents, submitting approved incident report form within 24 hours to Board of Health, Board of Selectmen, and Police. Um, so essentially, I mean, we're making it clear, 24 hours. Um, and we're noting that all follow-ups um, uh, on any particular incident would also have to be um, documented and reported in the same way. Um, we want to be on the same page with you, so. In the job description is also a clear description of um, the functions of the animal control officer, which include the annual inspection um, of, of uh, domestic animals. Um, so that would have to be a different reporting thing, but it makes clear that that is an integral part of the job and an expected part of the reporting. Now, uh, if I may, um, I wasn't privy to what the now assistant health officer um, had sent to the board of selectmen, but I understand there was a phone log. Do you do you recall that? Because this morning yeah. I met with her this morning, um, and she said that's critical because even if it comes in on a Friday, if that the phone log was there that Monday morning um, our administrative assistant could, she would know to look for X or Y, you know, whatever it might be. Well, what, what, what we put in the um, incident report um, document, the very first item is date and time incident reported to the animal control officer. Um, and, and the next line is the person to who, uh, who notified the animal control officer. And the goal there is just to have it all on one form. And uh, Frank has, the way Frank has worked is through the phone log. And I think some of the confusion um, is that I think sometimes he's considered that the reporting vehicle. And we're trying to make this um, clearly understood by all parties as the reporting vehicle. So this is just typically an incident report. What about the yearly reports that he's supposed to be submitting on um, inspections? The uh, the yearly report is is terms of an, a, annual inspections. Right. Yeah. So that's the last bullet point on the um, uh, summary of position responsibilities. Um, which reads, serves as the animal inspector responsible for annual inspection of dogs and premises um, uh, and domestic animals um, uh, um, and reports findings to the Board of Health and Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. On what frequency? Pardon? What frequency? Yearly, annual. Okay. 
Do we want to have a date, though? I mean, should it be within a month? Or, well, that I is generally done. Uh, <laughs> I am remembering back 50 years ago when my father was the annual inspector at Kingston and had to go out and count the five cows that were left in Kingston. That was done on an annual basis or a calendar year basis. Um, I suppose it's our option. I think maybe in this case, if we say it is calendar year, then we could expect that by the end of the year, which gives the... Uh, present animal control officer time to get it done. But he can do it any time during the year? Um, I think maybe the way to add some words here is we expect a report, uh, an annual report, a calendar year report at the end of the year. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what goes in the um, annual time, the report, town report. Yeah. Which is, um, I, I, I don't think we do it, or I'm not sure I've seen it. I, the, the Kingston one used to have, and I've done my annual inspection and census, and there were five <laughs> cows and three pigs and, you know, two horses. Uh, and that probably is what should be in the annual report. There is a... It makes it, riveting reading. Tarver's office needs to get notified of, this, of the incidents also. Who, they, who should? Tara's office, the clerk's office. Um, um, they have reports in there. That's how we found reports of other dogs. And because they have the list of the rabies and they give the licenses out, that's where they get the information of being caught up with um, um, vaccinations. Just to let you know. I mean, I, I can add that. Um, um, I'm not sure she wants to be inundated with every incident report along the way. They have a... They have, she okay. has information in um, her office on each. I've gotten them. Then I, I'm, I'm glad to add that. Um, so Tara would be reporting to as well, and the year-end census is calendar year. Maybe if we do the census or the inspection um, by the end of the calendar year and reporting in the first month of the new year. Yeah. Thank you, sir. My concern is that it is done each and every year. Yeah. I've talked to several owners of multiple animals, whether it be horses or cows or llamas or whatever, and I was told that yes, they were inspected not every year. Okay. Um, in some cases, they were inspected the day that they applied or whatever, and then never saw them again. I don't want that to continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll have it in this so that we'll it's put it in documented. And, you know, I, 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 the goal right now is to just cover every angle there is to cover, and so whatever um, shortcomings or confusion there's been in the past, we can get past, get on to important stuff. <laughs> okay? okay. Good. 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 All right. You okay with all that? Yep. When can we get a copy of that other uh, report? The uh, um, summary of position responsibilities? It is right here. Pretty much, I'll give you each a copy. Um, I will change the wording and um, are we okay uh, um, to move forward with that or should we vote on it next week? Or? I think if, uh, why don't we give Board of Health chance to just glance it over and if you're if you're okay with it then we'll uh, vote it next week okay so if you have anything this week get it to me I'll put the final verbiage is I'd really like to um, uh, finish this next week I'll be glad to speak to Frank a little later in the week and hopefully we can move on yeah okay, okay? very good thank, thank you okay. appreciate you coming in thanks Bob. thanks Eric. Thank We have another one? Uh, not that I know of. Hi. Hi. I'm here for the Board of Health. Wait. You're waiting for the Board of Health? Yes. Okay. That's your appointment. <laughs> okay. Take your time. No, we're, we're done. Oh, actually, we have one more item that may relate to Board of Health, which is the permitting application process. The uh, third bullet under updates. 
So help me with that, what we were talking um, about. That was, that was the um, process of um, beginning to update our small event permit oh. process. Yeah. Um, I had been working on that. Um, Board of Health asked since they um, worked on the large event permitting process and did a great job on it, um, that they'd like to take a shot at that. And I think the, the I think that's where it should come from to right. start. So I don't know if they have anything to add. The uh, small event uh, 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 permitting process update? Um, yeah, we were thinking of, I don't know, 1000 or $1,500 and any more than 10 people. So. Oh, I, thought you, I thought you were going to say like a 1,000 days to get it done, because it may take a 1,000 days. Now we'll find out how many people really watch this. <laughs> Just kidding. So I, that's only to say it, it's gone off my plate and onto yes. your, your plate for now. It has, and uh, we, we will probably not take it up until October <laughs> because of a, one board member is traveling. <laughs> uh, we'll not be at our next meeting, so uh, we'll schedule it for the next time. And I, 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 I fully acknowledge how thorny it potentially is, and if, if it takes a while, that's... We understand why that might happen. Well, well, I mean, the only reason we set those numbers was on your suggestion, you know. <laughs> <laughs> always our fault, but the always our fault, but the end. Always. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good. We're making progress. Oh, good. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Hi. Thanks, Eric. Community paradigm uh, search. Um, really don't have anything more to say. Um, I did send you the note Tom Coulter had sent. Yep. And uh, I did talk to Bernie, and he was going to talk to the fellow. He had already mentioned it to us. So we'll see what the, where that goes. Other so than that, we just let the public know what we did last Wednesday, that we met with Bernie, that he told us we had a bunch of applicants, that I think Friday's the deadline. Right. Um, I think he had 18 applicants as of last Wednesday and uh, was looking forward to some more. He felt he had some good candidates in that mix. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, we've got a standing committee set up now that will uh, start to interview to get it down to three and then it'll be up to the Board of Selectmen to mm -hmm. finally make the final choice. And we have dates for all of those and we do running into October so the process is moving right along. Right. It feels comfortable. Friday, September 29th. <coughs> September 25th, 20th. isn't it? Oh, September 22nd, did he? Sorry. What uh, is the deadline? The deadline, I think, is September 29th, which is this. Is it? Is it the 29th or the? Oh, or is it the 22nd? 22nd. Uh, which would be this Friday. 22nd. This Friday, I believe it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see. The fire and EMS, we did announce that we're uh, going, we voted to move forward with MRI. Um, they were going to ask for, they needed data requirements from the fire chief. And so they were going to approach him directly. And we now have a new fire clerk and they should be able to supply that. I think the estimate was that would take about two weeks to go through and start to put all the data together to then they would come in and start doing interviews. So that also is in process. And I'll see the fire chief tomorrow just to make sure that uh, he's on board with that. I assume he is. He said he would be. But. Energy conservation. Uh, I don't have anything to report on that. Um, I, 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 I don't either. As, as, I, as I understand it, I mean, I just checked online. They are, uh, I think they're in Hanson, and they work for towns and private companies on increasing the greening, decreasing the carbon footprint. Um, maybe Bree knows more. They think we have, there is grant money available and want to come in and talk to us. Is that? Yes, we, uh, yeah, I think you get dealt with Dale and with the transition of Dale leaving. So, so you follow up and schedule them? 
I believe this, he's been speaking with Christine. Okay, so that's the. And okay. She had a um, an appointment okay. for him to be coming in. Great. Okay. And the gentleman called today and said that I gave him call, uh, Christine's telephone number. He wanted to actually speak to her. Okay. To explain, Tom, and talk to him. About okay. Her. All right. Okay. Mm. Correspondence, I guess. Wow. This is. This is a good kind of chair. You just <laughs> zip it through the agenda. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, all right. So let's see. Um, oh, okay. So this is an email that we received from the town treasurer, um, uh, letting us know that in um, the obtaining the loan for the new police station um, she needs a certified statement from us um, stating that the police station will be managed and operated by the town um, and that the town has no contract with any other arrangement so okay. uh, I'd make a motion that we ask Bree to write such a letter and that we sign it I'll second that mm -hmm. all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. would you like me to actually write it? yeah and in fact, the sentence is right there underlined, yeah. which is the body Run of the letter. Run it by Colleen just to make sure it meets hers, and then we'll sign it. Mm -hmm. um, the Warren signed. Did you vote for that? Yes, we just voted. Okay, what was the vote? Well, okay. Two to nothing. Um, uh, warrant signed today by for the Board of Selectmen, custodial supply for $63, community paradigm $3,569, Verizon $1.17, <laughs> um, Eversource $1,739, Contact Ar Context Architecture $42,900, Verizon $561. Context, I assume, was signed to yeah. by the safety uh, public um, safety board, right? Yeah, went to the way this is going to set up, as I understand it, in working with um, uh, Colleen Thompson and Barbara, the bills will go first to P3, and they're the ones that will say, yeah, it's all right, then to um, the committee and or Colleen, and then finally um, they'll come to us and say it's okay, okay. to sign. So P3 gets the first look at it right. to make sure they're satisfied right. with the work. And as long as everybody's initials or signature are on it, I mean, that's my auditing background, so I want to make sure we... Because that's big I, money. I don't think it's that formalized at this point. Um, so it's going to be like an email. In other words, it got sent to P3. He said okay to call. Yeah, but I mean, if he says okay, he should actually just initial it or something to show. Because a, a verbal... Well, I don't know if he's verbally saying or it's in an email. I mean, the I'm sending an email to Colleen. I mean, we'll have a paper yeah, trail. There'll be a paper trail. All right. And then Chris, Colleen okay. came back and said, spoke to in her email. I'll sit down with Barbara, though. I want to make sure that, you know, there's too many things. We have an escrow account that goes back um, <coughs> at least 20 years. It's not a lot of money, but people can't identify what that where that money came from yeah and it's sitting there so now we're going to have to go back and do a we're going to have to probably have somebody come in and just sit down in the cellar and go through all these old invoices yeah. i don't want to have that to happen with this um, and i you know that uh, the the present scheme that's been put together was kind of done a little bit quickly last week to take care of this bill and um yeah we might as well get it right at the beginning that's yeah. that's my whole thing yeah okay. Did you, see, Thanks, did you see Colleen? Uh, you haven't had your email. I don't know. I'll forward it just in case you didn't get No, I did see it. Oh, you did? Okay. I yeah. didn't know what email yeah. it went to for you. Yeah. Mm. I had um, them. Um, Tyler's going to send an email out to let them know that your email is not working. Yeah. Okay. Um, so these are um, two documents for Chapter 90 for um, some highway stuff that I guess all the selectmen have to sign. I don't think we voted these yet. One of them is Lake Street level with dense binder intact, and the other is Pleasant Street the same. Um, <coughs> They've both been approved by James. Jim Mulcahy, right? Right. Yeah. So I, do we want to vote this sure. tonight, sign it, and we'll just we'll get Christine to sign it later on? Yeah. So I make a motion. We approve both of these and sign them. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
I guess so there's four things here to sign. <laughs> when I first came on as selectman, uh, the very first night they handed me one of those to sign first. I signed the top line and Joe Freitas just about jumped down my throat. That no, that's the chair's place. <laughs> And it was one of those ones that startled me so much, I have never forgotten that, not to take the favored spot on that. Um, so uh, this is an update from a law firm letting us know that the foreclosure auction for 150 County Road has been postponed to October 12th. Um, this is a request to renew the copy copier lease um, from the police chief. Um, he's letting us know that the um, present copier at the police department, uh, the um, lease expires November of 2017. He requests from the board we renew the lease and that the old copier go to the uh, fire station. Um, so I make a motion we, uh, we go ahead and renew the copier lease for the police. I'll second. Mm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Aye. This? No. Um, this one actually turns came today, I think it turns out to be surprisingly timely. This is from Xfinity um, uh, Emergency Reporting Procedure, letting us know about down lines or phone lines um, um, uh, or cable that isn't functioning in an emergency situation and gives the number for us, that is the town to use, not a number for the general public, and then goes on to the uh, how to get to someone and actually speak to them. So. Uh, apropos of that, uh, we there's a meeting tomorrow at 10 uh, with myself, the fire chief, the police chief, and the highway supervisor on this emergency management. Yep. Um, so if there's anything that comes out, will be posted both on the website and on Facebook. So, Good. Yeah. Um, this is a letter from the fire chief informing us that he is declaring the 2003 Red Ford Explorer out of service. Um, uh, I am remanding the vehicle back to the Board of Selectmen to be declared surplus. I uh, mentioned that to the uh, service garage uptown and they said it's not worth fixing it all just mm. so we should okay. probably just sell it for scrap okay. now I don't know we can uh, see when Christine's back we may have to post it anyways but it's 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 mm. not worth fixing the uh, Plimpton Express uh, makes note about some resignations from the fire department it makes note that sunset tonight is at 647. And there is a reminder that the Plumpton Community Preservation Committee is seeking new projects. And the deadline for applications, October 15th, there are um, the um, CPC plan and application and how to are all on the webs on the town website in the CPC section. There are also copies of all that hanging out in this lobby and at the library. Great. And with a bit of surprise, I report that that completes correspondence. Great. <laughs> so we have uh, upcoming Board of Selectmen meetings uh, next Monday and the Monday, Monday following, September 25th and October 2nd. And I, we don't have any executive meetings planned. Um, I will just mention, and I'll mention it again next week, I think it's two weeks from tonight, um, October 2nd, it is possible that I will be a little late for the meeting. Okay. Um, I, um, I top priority these are, but there's something that I just must take care of. I may be on time, maybe a few minutes late. I would encourage you to start without me. Okay. And I'll ask Bree to keep an eye on them that they don't like take my chair. Or <laughs> we'll keep your chair. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Let's see, why don't we quickly, I, I don't know that we have any updates, but financial management, um, I'm waiting for the vehicle list from the fire department and the highway department. Um, they're supposed to be preparing it, so as soon as we have that, we'll insert it into our uh, reporting. Public safety? Um, 
Um, I, you know, the, I, I haven't checked. Uh, there was some chance they were going to meet this week. I think they're going to wait I until next week. I saw they canceled. Yeah. 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 I think they probably have. I will be on top of that when they meet again. Okay. Technology, um, I think pretty much what we've been talking about. Michael has the emails. Uh, we're going to have to update a number of the uh, computers in house. But that was done as part of the grant program, so that should be done. Volunteerism, I don't have anything or grants. No. Okay. Nothing at this point. Uh, minutes? Do, um, we have? do we want, we have two minutes. Do we want to save those for next week when I Chris think we should. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything from you before we? <laughs> Slackman's Rants and Raves. Mm. Um, I'll start. This is one I seem to be doing quite a bit. The Boy Scouts are doing another Eagle project. It's just amazing. We have the, one of the most active Boy Scout units I've ever seen. Uh, so they were over at the library, and they were working on the grounds, and also out back here uh, for the uh, field. They've been uh, working on a project. So kudos to them. They do a great job. You, every time I go by the sign at the library, I think what a project that was mm -hmm. and how nice it was. Nice. Um, so my rave actually is for town meeting that was kind enough last year to vote money for the consultant um, in the uh, town administrator search and uh, the consultant in the, uh, the fire study. And I, I'm really excited about both of them. And it's, it, it is money spent, it is tax money spent, and it's such good seed money, that, that small investment that hopefully can make a huge difference. I agree. Um, very I agree. appreciative of that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. I have a motion to close the meeting. With pleasure. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second? Right. I mean, second. Aye. Thank you. Good night. Good evening. Good evening.